Well, g'day guys, I'm Mitch Stocker, this is Life in the Peloton, welcome back. It's been a few weeks, well it's been a few episodes since you've come on the road with me and that's what you're going to get to do this week, sit back and enjoy. This is a story, we're going to head up to the north of Australia, up to Cairns and we're going to tackle the Reef to Reef. It's a mountain bike stage race, it's four stages and I was in the Mixed Pairs event. You're probably wondering what that is. I was wondering what it is as well. I got myself involved. I got myself really thrown under the bus, you know, as they say, because it was something completely new. Mountain biking, mixed pairs, racing. It was a really exciting event. And when I had the idea to go to these events this year, there's three of them here in Australia. You've got Port to Port earlier in the year, Reef to Reef just now. And later in the year, over in Western Australia, you've got another one called Cape to Cape. I was aiming at doing all three this year and I wanted to hit up the Reef to Reef and I thought it'd be cool to do mixed pairs, something completely different, something I've never done. And I wanted to ride with Peter Mullins. You've heard her on the podcast earlier this year. I know she's a bit of a devil on the mountain bike, so I thought, well, maybe she can show me the ropes. Well, unfortunately, she just said, no way, you're not riding with me, but you should ride with Holly Harris. Now, Holly, I'd never heard of Holly That's because I'd never really looked into mountain biking, but I certainly found out about her. And that was who I rode with here at Reef to Reef. It was a fantastic chance, not only get to know her, but to compete in this event, just in a different style, something completely different, like I said, the mixed pairs. It was a really great story. I'm not gonna say too much about it, because we're going to talk about it all in this podcast. We're going to find out much more about Holly as I unravel everything about her, who she is, how she goes on the mountain bike, and our challenges over the week riding together. The best part about this was I got to choose a kit. I got us to team us up in a kit, and of course, Rafa kitted us up, and it was awesome. I wasn't in the EF stuff this time, so I got to have a look in their catalog and go, let's just ride in some of this stuff. And of course, Holly got to wear the kit too. I sat down with her just to get an opinion of what she thought it was like being dressed up in some Rafa stuff. I do really like the kit. It's been probably my first time properly giving full kit a good run and I've been pretty impressed. I mean, I've worn a lot of chemis throughout my time. The quality is there and you see why Rafa does have the name it does. Like it is, yeah, it, it does have a different feel to most chemis, that's for sure. I think the cut of the kit is obviously like it's second to none but then I think like the material is like it's so light and just feels like especially when you're riding here and it's so hot and you feel like you've got nothing on it feels so good (laughs) Um, and it's actually like it's tough like the cut is so important and like yeah over the shoulder straps I get real funny about my shoulder like shoulder straps and they've been excellent yeah impressed. Now, guys, like I said before, I'm not going to intro this one too much because the story really tells itself. Holly Harris is a champion mountain biker in herself. She's a 27-year-old girl coming from Armidale up in northern New South Wales. She's showing me the ropes of this event because she's previously ridden it with her brother. She's won it with her brother. She's been to world championships in cross-country mountain bike. Plus, she's also ridden at a very high level on the road. So a very accomplished cyclist herself. It was great to really team up with her, meeting her first time at the airport there in Cairns, and then just getting to know her over the week. You guys are going to get to follow our story, plus meet everyone else around the race as well, and hear about that fight for the victory in the mixed pairs. Guys, I hope you enjoy listening to this as much as I did riding with Holly this week, and as much as I did challenging myself there at the Reef to Reef. So guys, sit back and enjoy this episode. All right, well, here we are. We're at Reef to Reef, and we're sitting back in, as you said, Holly, the Taj Mahal, our accommodation. Welcome to the podcast, Holly. You are my partner, or I'm your partner for this mountain bike event. What do you think? What, where are we? We're in Cairns, mm. close to the World Cup Trail. It's pretty gnarly. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful weather, though. And we're in um, some pretty fancy ACOM. We're in the student accommodation here and we're about to embark in the Reef to Reef, which is one of three events in Australia, the Epic Series, I think it is called. And um, we've decided to go into the Mixed Pairs competition and we thought, well, I thought it'd be cool to sort of document this series because one, I'm not really a mountain biker. Holly is like a champion mountain biker. Holly, what is your um, reputation in the mountain bike season? Are you five times Australian champion? 
Yeah, yeah, six times. Six now, times, but that's sorry. not mountain bike. That's gravel. <laughs> gravel. <laughs> gravel. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> But what are we embarking on? You've done this before. You've done it with your brother. You've won actually the the mixed pairs as well. Tell us about what we're about to start. We're in the we're the day before. We've just been out on the trails, just sort of tested the waters. You know, I followed you down a couple of trails. You got to follow me. <laughs> what are you thinking so far? Are you nervous? What are you? You know, what are the feelings? No, I look. I love these events. I've done all of them multiple times, and like every time they deliver. Like I haven't had a bad one. I think like I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> um, Why? Oh, <laughs> my 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 fitness. I'm a bit, bit worried about, <laughs> but but we'll be good. We'll get around that. <laughs> you just got to be patient with my puffing. <laughs> I'll cry sometimes, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, but no, I think it's going to be a good few days. The weather looks good, and yeah. How does it work with the pairs in terms of like, how do we ride together? I've never done anything like this. You, you got to stick together when we do. So tomorrow's a time trial. Obviously, that's pretty self-explanatory. We just got to stay together like a normal road time trial, but we'll be on trails. Yeah. But then what happens when we're in the bunch? Like you got to make sure you stay together. If you can't just ride off on me, you got to actually stop and wait for me. A hundred percent. It's like, I think it's about just looking after each other and making sure you stay together. Like if you're not with each other, then you can't really like, I think it's just looking after the slow, slower rider, which is always me. <laughs> <laughs> Previously. <laughs> but yeah, like um, it's, yeah, you're never going to win if you're dropping someone. I don't think. And it's just like communicating and yeah. Not being an asshole, <laughs> not cracking it, just being patient. And um, yeah, I think like pairs racing is very different because like you do like the male is generally quite like a, a lot stronger than the female. So it's an interesting dynamic. And I think like it's just, um, yeah, working with each other. Like as, as soon as you see like a team where there's like a bit of like frustration, mm. that's usually when the team kind of struggles because ah. you know they, they're arguing and it's hard to work together. Um, but if there's like good communication, I think that's like generally when it works the best. So what are you thinking then when you know, I asked you to be my partner, not even knowing <laughs> each other, we met today at the airport when I picked you up. <laughs> Isn't that going to be something strange, like not knowing each other going into this? Yeah, that's going to be really hard. Like, you don't know how I ride. I don't know how you ride. Like, I think it'll be tough, but I think it'll be good. Like, I'm a good communicator. I'll tell you when I'm tired. (laughs) (laughs) What was it like riding with your brother previously? Or have you ridden with other people as well? Um, With these ones, I've only ridden with my brother. So, Mm. he's like, he's really good. We, he know like... We changed gears at the same time by oh accident. Gosh. Like, yeah, so he's really good and he's pretty patient. Like most, like we've, yeah, been really lucky. It's been really good racing with him, but it's like nice to change it up because you get really comfortable racing with like the same person. Mm. So like, I, I like changing it up. It'll be good. So what did your brother, Michael, he think about, you know, you going, you know, that's it, I'm out. I'm going, I'm going to change. Was he like, what? You're ditching me? Yeah, he's very offended. <laughs> we haven't talked since. <laughs> yeah. No, it's going to be great. Look, we're on the eve. We were supposed to ride earlier in the year at Port to Port. That got cancelled, so we pushed it back to Reef to Reef, which where we are now. Beautiful escaping Melbourne winter. Not so much for you. You're from Queen. Well, you're living in Queensland at the moment, so it's just a little bit more north than you. But I'm up here in the middle of winter again in the sun. Um, so we're just about to embark on it and... We'll check in with you over the week or over the next few days. Just had our pre-race meal. We're sitting down at a lovely cafe in Trinity Beach. If I could paint this picture, it's just like, feels like we're on holidays, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The the beach does make it feel a little bit holiday-esque, yep. (laughs) And um, today we're about to kick off. Let's get this thing started. It's, what is it, 17... Hey, 18.2. I don't want to. <laughs> don't want to count or anything. No, nah, but yeah, 720 meters of climbing, just a little bump. <laughs> Let's run through the stages actually. So today we're starting with the 18.2k teams time trial, well, pairs time trial. And then we go into three more stages with their bunch races, aren't they? Yep, yep. Group start. Yep. Full on. What are the stages? How far are they? Um, I think around 40 to 50 k's with about like 500 meters of climbing most days. 
All right, well, so it's a decent amount of climbing in that kind of uh, distance, but let's get it. I'm just pretty keen to get this thing underway. It's been a bit of hanging around, hasn't there? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of anticipation. <laughs> Getting stressed out about the big, like, uphill road climb. <laughs> We've run into some competitors too this morning, so it's all building up. All right, well, let's, let's get this show on the road. Stage one, we've had a bit of lunch, we've done the time trial, I'm talking with Em and Carl who actually caught Holly and I, we were the lead two pair to go off and then next thing I know I look behind and you two are right behind us, what did it feel like when you saw us just in the in the distance already after like 2k Em? Oh, it was a good little carrot, I thought. <laughs> it was good, it was good, it was a good little carrot but I also was like, they can stay with us as well. When you came past, you gave us a right encouragement. Come on, Holly, stay with us. And it was great. You know, we sort of jumped in your wheel. And I learned a little bit from you, Carl, because actually pairs racing is not just about riding together. It's about supporting each other, little cheeky pushes, you know, the psychological support, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think the mixed pairs especially is pretty unique because there's often two very different strengths. Uh, so, yeah, figuring out a good balance of support is essential. What about keeping it together? Is there any sort of, you know, bickering and fighting out there? How's it go? Not bickering as such, maybe being firm. <laughs> um, I think it's just, it's hard, like, because guys, do, they just accelerate a lot harder out of corner, so trying to find that balance is quite hard. That's why I like to be in the single track first, so I'm not mm. having to accelerate as much and burn those bickies early on. Um, but you've got to work that out on the day when you're racing, and the trails are all so different. What advice can you give to me? You know, having seen us out there and, you know, try and think back to the first time you two rode together, what's the trick? I think uh, the old saying, slow is smooth and smooth is fast, Mm. is really good for the mixed pairs uh, because it's very easy to cook your female partner by pressuring them into going too hard at the start of the stage. What about cooking yourself? Because I actually felt like I cooked myself. I tried to push. I was like, oh, I'll just push Holly up this hill, you know? I gave her like this big push. I'm like, oh, wait for me. Wait for me. My legs are gone now. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really, really easy to cook yourself as well. Um, so keeping a lid on it. I find always pushing is a bit better than pulling because when they're holding on to you, you've got less kind of uh, almost feeling of how much effort you're putting in. Like you can really, really wreck yourself pretty fast when they're holding on. Now, we're about 40 seconds behind you two. We're going to stage two. You don't want to give us too much advice. What's going to happen tomorrow? First time I'm going to be racing in the bunch in pairs. How does it differ from today? Because today was a time trial. Yeah, today it's more just ma- managing your effort. But I think tomorrow is, is just try and stay up the front. Mm. Yeah, stay up the front. Be smooth. Just stay with Holly. Look after each other. Um, I think you were pushing her very well today. Every time I turned back, I was like, ugh go away <laughs> um but yeah i think you you did great it was fun yeah. loving it really loving it all right guys let's go have a cold beer and do this presentation to the winners <laughs> thanks mitch all right here we are again day one is done holly we've done it we did the time trial after a lot of build up we've finally ridden together it's good to have it done isn't it oh man it feels so much better having it done <laughs> Run everyone through about today because we started off, you gave me the lead. It was, Mitch, take us out. I'm like, oh, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> You're following me. It was a bit of a paddock to start and we hit the first, it was a time trial, so it was 20 second time gaps. We were the first team to go off yep. and we hit this first <laughs> sort of rock garden uphill. Bang, I'm unclipped. You're unclipped following me. We lost probably 15 seconds, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> Slammed up your back wheel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should have watched where I was going. <laughs> Forgot about that part. It was all right. I reckon it's good. You you can't start perfect because then if you start perfect, then like it's hard to get better. Like you've got to start bad and then improve, you know, work on it, <laughs> which we did. We did, yeah. And we went around and then we hit the first climb and then all of a sudden we had like the, the super team up our, you know, right up behind right us. Up Clacker, yep. Yeah, we had and um, Carl, they're good, good bunch. <laughs> exactly, they were right up there, but they came past us. We stuck with them, and it was just working out how to do it. You know, me working out because in the teams, I'm starting to work out. You can give little pushes. You can give. It's actually also psychological sort of encouragement rather than negative stuff. I don't know how'd I go. I'm not even being like biased. Not trying to keep you on side, but you're good. You're really good. It's like because it is a really 
fine line. I mean, sometimes you can be like too encouraging and you're like, okay, I know you're probably mm. talking a bit of smack now. But no, it was good. I think like we worked together pretty well. I mean, you pushed pretty good. <laughs> 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 Nearly pushed me into the next mountain bike park. I was like, that's good. <laughs> no, it, and I was surprised how good you are at descending after Thank you, you. talk yourself down. <laughs> I was just trying to follow your line and that's what we did. So when it was flat, I'd try to ride the front, but there wasn't actually much flat. On the hills, we try to ride together. Sometimes I put myself too deep, pushing you, and actually we're just riding together up the hills. Um, and then the downhill, you just took control, and I try to keep up, and you just listen to hear how close I was or far behind. <laughs> and we got through. We finished second. Yeah, I was so I was pretty like I was like wow, that's pretty cool. Well, um, yeah, and I like I had a good time. I thought it was fun. I did too. It was an hour of power, wasn't it? It was it was hard, like a an interesting sort of fun, but yeah, it was good. Like I thought like we worked, yeah, we had good combination of strengths. Like I think like you're so strong on the like up hills and I was like I was suffering a little bit. I thought somebody left their pug off the lead and there I was like, somebody should go catch their dog and then I realised it was me. <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> but um yeah, no, and I think like me being able to recover a little bit on the descents kind of helped us mm. not blow too bad. <laughs> like, I thought it was good. So now we're sitting about 39, 40 seconds behind the leaders, yep. uh, Em and Kane, and, um, sorry, Carl, sorry. <laughs> Tomorrow is actually a bunch race. We're back in it. Everyone's going to be there. Life what? in the peloton. Yeah, it is going to be life in the peloton, the, the mountain bike peloton. <laughs> yeah. Run us through, what's tomorrow's stage? Um, 39.5 kilometers to be exact, 800 meters of climbing. So a little bit of climbing. Um, yeah, a bit of single track, but mainly like farm roads and like mm. gravel roads. So yeah, it'll be a really different dynamic tomorrow. What's the tricks? How, how do we help each other tomorrow? Um, oh, I'm a bit of a Gumby in the pillow, so you're probably going to have to watch out for me. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to put my face in the wind and, you know, <laughs> drag people off my wheel, but then I remember that I'm not faster than anyone, so that's a bit awkward. <laughs> Are we going to try and take the lead back? Is that even possible? Well, I think that's the whole point of racing. Mm. <laughs> well, what's that? What, what, how do we go about that? Do we try and attack? Do we just try and follow, wait till the third or fourth day? No, I reckon we wait for them to make a mistake. Okay. I reckon we pressure them into letting us win. <laughs> <laughs> so just sit in the bunch early on. When's the single trail come? What's the tactic there? Because I was speaking to some other guys out there and they said, no, no, you've got to let the girls go first because, you know, follow them through, find out what, when it's right to go. What was your tactic with your brother when you've done this before? I usually just take the lead because I can't see very well. Mm. And so it makes it, I should be wearing contacts. Like, I, yeah, you'd be horrified if you knew what my vision was like. I won't wear glasses. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, but honestly, I don't really mind. Like, it's a, yeah, I think some girls like to lead, some girls like a wheel to follow. Mm. Um, I think, like, honestly, it's just, you know, it doesn't really matter if you just kind of relax and are respectful of each other's pace. I think, yeah, either way works. Yeah, sweet. All right. Well, tomorrow we're down to Port Douglas as well, out of our accommodation into yep. the new. We're going to the Ritz Carlton tomorrow, which will be nice. Tomorrow I have a spa, <laughs> so that's going to be very interesting. A bit flash for me. I'll get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, let's check in tomorrow. Well, as we drive out this morning, Holly, I thought it might be actually good to get to know a bit more about you, find a little bit more out about your background. So, I guess, how did you get into cycling? <laughs> <laughs> the old question we always get asked, but I'm interested. Um, oh, like, I guess I didn't get into it um, young, like most people. Um, I used to like running a fair bit, um, playing a bit of hockey, a bit of, like, yeah, I was, yeah, more into that sort of stuff. Um then I got a bit of a sore knee, um, decided I'll go for a ride with my dad. Mm. So we did 12Ks and I was Ooh. like, holy, I'm <laughs> not bad at this business. Anyway, so did my ride and then dad's like, oh, I'm going to a race hole. Want to come with me? I was like, yeah, well, since I'm so good, might as well. And I won 50 bucks wow. at the race. So I was like, oh, this isn't bad. And then I just kept going. Never won 50 bucks again, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 
decided it's, I like it. It's funny in the beginning too, because I remember when I was riding first and I did some 50k rides with my dad, and I remember thinking, oh, I'm not going to make it. You know, this is so <laughs> big. And, you know, now I'm not going to say 50k is easy, but it is. You can just bang it out. It's all perspective in that beginning. It's those milestones. You know, 12k, you think... I rode 12k today. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, yeah, it was a pretty big deal. I was like, oh, it usually takes me a fair, fair while to run this. Like, mm. and I just rip it up on the bike. <laughs> so why mountain biking? Well, that's what I had. Mm. Like, that, and that's what Dad had. So I didn't really know that road riding was a thing. Um, so, yeah, I just picked that up and kind of went from there. Like, honestly, yeah, I was just doing what everyone else was doing. And there's and you're from Armadale, Armadale in um, New South Wales, northern New South Wales. Is it a big big scene there, mountain biking, or was just sort of your dad got you into that, and that was just you know the rest is history? Well, honestly, we didn't really mountain bike so much. We more had like we just flogged it out on the gravel roads. Yeah. Like we didn't really know mountain biking was a thing until like we started doing a bit more racing and sort of realised like oh people actually like take this pretty seriously. We should probably go do some racing. And so we, we kind of, like, worked it out. Like, no one around us really raced. And then, so Dad sort of started doing some club races. And then, yeah, my first, like, proper race was, like, state. And then I went to national champs. So <laughs> I just jumped in. <laughs> and what, what was your your time like then? You know, because after that, you, you dabbled into the road a little bit. You know, you eventually got pulled across the road. I guess you were probably interested in watching some road racing too once you got involved in cycling a bit more, the Tour de France, I'm imagining. Um, you know, you went across and, and raced on the road as well. What was that like? Was it a draw card for you or was it just something you thought you had to do along the way? Oh, no, I actually quite, like, I enjoyed it. Um, Armadale has a really cool road scene. Mm. Um, we've got the CCHR crew, which is, it's a pretty elite group of cyclists. What They're does that stand for? Clint's Clooney Hill Repeats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> hey, Clint. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's, like, a really cool bunch of guys. Um, and it was really cool for me. Um, like, a lot of the time I find, like, you go to a race and, people treat you different because you're a girl and you know let you win or like but they just treat me like one of them and they would race me they'll roll me they'll like yeah try and drop me which is like but then they also were like pretty good and sometimes I'd get a hand of God to save me when I'm getting (laughs) pushed out the door the back door but yeah um they were real cool and I was very like it was nice having people you could race and there wasn't that many mountain bike races so yeah I got into the road riding a bit because you've raced on the highest level as well. You've raced the world championships on the mountain bike, but you've also done the Tour Down Under on the road. Um, some of the highest level racing. When you compare both of those, you know, what did you enjoy most, you know, the atmosphere? You were drawn then back to the mountain biking, I guess, because that's what we're doing now. Yeah. Honestly, mountain biking is, like, that's what I love. Mm. Like, I, I do love road, but it's just not the same. Like, mountain bikes are just, like... It doesn't matter what race you do, there's just such a cool atmosphere. I mean, World Cups, you just have people with bloody chainsaws, oh, flaggers, wow. they're screaming at you. They're all on the piss. Like, it's it's actually just, like, it's such a cool vibe. I find, like, road is probably more of a serious sort of scene. Um, and then you have, like, events like this where you just have, like, everyone can do it. Like, not can do it, but everyone's doing it. Like, Well, they got, can, yeah. You know... Um, people in backpacks, fanny packs, and yeah. they've got people with bananas sticky taped to their frame, and it's just like, this is so cool. I saw two guys yesterday coming across the line cracking a beer open as they crossed the line. <laughs> they carried beers with them the whole time. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, you don't get that in a no. race. Like, you just don't. So, well, yeah. tell me about um, in 2018, uh, the Commonwealth Games. You know, you're sort of coming to the height of your, I guess, your mountain bike career at that point. Um, and you're up for the selection there. There's a bit of a, a down point, um, a low point, because it was a bit of controversy. You should have been there. Tell me about that story. Yeah, like, it was pretty tough for me. I think, like, I was probably at the peak of my, like, performance at that time, and I was putting a lot of effort in, um, and I really wanted to race Gold Coast Com Games. I mean, like, it was at home. Yeah. Um, we qu- Like, we had two positions for, a, like, women to race. Um, and unfortunately, um, the governing body didn't really feel that I was worth developing and I didn't really have much potential. So they 
elected not to take me and leave that spot blank and not give it to like so weird yeah. one position so they decide just to ride with one rider just one rider yep and I was like yeah I'll pay for my accommodation I've got Aussie kit like I'm ready to roll yeah and um yeah so that was that was pretty devastating for me like that was a pretty big knock <laughs> What happened after that? Like, what was the sort of comeback for you? Was that sort of like, you know, I need to step away from the sport, I need to do something different that led you to these events? Or what was sort of the aftermath of that? I think, yeah, I did get more into the pairs racing with my brother. Um, and look, I still don't really enjoy cross country as much anymore. Mm. Um, I, yeah, I think, like, I just had to... So I didn't hang the bike up. I think, like, you just have to draw on what you actually love um and it's just yeah i do i love riding my bike and i love having a good time with my mates and i'd never give that up so i kind of just went back to yeah my roots well tell me where you are right now because you're you've moved out of armadale you've moved up to the gold coast a bit of a life change there but where are you on the bike where where are you holly harris now you know you you spoke about we spoke about the top level stuff Going, going back, sort of finding you know, your roots again, what you love with cycling. What does it look like for now for you? You know, now we're, we're here doing this. This could, you know, who knows, kickstart some kind of fire or maybe it's already kickstarted itself. Yeah, like I think, um, and look, it's not like I've stopped training or mm. anything. Like I've been training a fair bit, but just doing base miles, just enjoying yep. the sun, doing some exploring been drinking a few margaritas just enjoying my life a little bit (laughs) um and I'm definitely not at my peak performance um but I think like the last few weeks I've been doing a fair bit of racing and like especially this weekend I was like oh I actually wouldn't mind being a bit fast again (laughs) like I um I think I've got the bug back might have to go do some efforts or something I don't know (laughs) (laughs) Well, great. Well, let's let's get up to the race um, and let's get into it. A few days to go. Giddy up. Oh, I'm speaking here with one of the organisers, Devin Beckman. Mate, tell me, when you come to these events and you actually see it all happening, reef to reef, and you actually get to, you know, because a lot of work gets put into it behind the scenes, but actually being on the ground, I think that's probably the best part of being the crew. You get to come here and see it happen what's it like when you get here and finally see it all unravel yeah absolutely it's you know why we all do our jobs is to actually come and deliver these events uh, we spend a lot of time you know for each event it's a year every year that we're working up to these events um, and to actually put them on get on the ground throw the crates down uh, see the riders come through um, that's what it's all about for us and the last few years with COVID has been really tough because you know the one thing that we do in our jobs we can't actually do which is deliver events so to be back on the ground seeing the riders you know seeing the happy faces seeing people stoked uh, that's what it's all about for us what's it what's it like when you know the last event we were talking about was port to port when it gets pulled you know only a few days before and you have to make that call you're arming and ahhing oh how can we push this through how can we make it happen and eventually you get to the point and you're like nah we've got to can it how does it actually feel given the call through to everyone yeah, it's pretty devastating. You know, you, again, you put you know blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, in this case, a lit, little, literally all of those three. Um, and yeah, to make that call so late was really tough. But at the end of the day, it was the right one. And um, you know, we had people up in Newcastle that were, the trails were just underwater, and we would have devastated them. Um, so yeah, you take solace in the fact that it's the right decision, but it's still pretty tough. And you definitely have a, a beer or two that night to kind of uh, drown your sorrows. What about the trails in the different areas? Do you reach out to the local people there to help you find the actual routes and how do you help design the new routes? One, well, maybe they're not new routes every year, but create the course every year because you're not obviously knowing each area like the back of your hand. So you need to lean on the people from the area, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And so we bring people in from the local area, uh, from the local mountain bike clubs. Um, so for Reef to Reef, we've got three course guys that are all live up in Cairns and Port Douglas. Um, and they've been around you know, the mountain biking scene for 20, 30 years. So they know all these trails, some of them, the trails that they've built. Um, yeah, Normie, our commissaire, is the president of the Cairns Mountain Bike Club. So um, he's super involved with the community. Um, yeah, they basically spend a lot of time out riding trails, which is probably the dream job for a lot of us. Um, and yeah, scoping out stages and working things out and then our team kind of comes in um, and helps with uh, everything around the courses. So, you know, your start and finish venues, um, your traffic management plans, all those kind of things. That That's where we kind of add the value. The fun job. Oh, yeah, always the fun job, dealing with councils and uh, <laughs> traffic management plans. But, no, it's all part of the event and bringing it together. And that's, you know, we want to provide an experience that's not just between the start and the finish line, but also, you know, before the hand and afterwards that uh, riders can really enjoy. 
Who scopes out the breweries then? Oh, that's me on Google Maps, <laughs> just checking out the, the reviews, the TripAdvisor reviews of the breweries. So in one word, you know, people out there listening, they're going, oh, you know, what are these things that they do? You know, they, these idiots who go and do these four-day mountain bike races. If you can describe in one word, to, to, well, not one word, in one sort of thing, the atmosphere, what is it all about? Is it the atmosphere? Is it the racing? Is it the challenge? What is it? Yeah, so I mean, obviously we've got the top guys that come along. They, they're here to race and, you know, that's what they do and we love seeing them race. But, you know, 90% of the guys here are just here to have a good time and that's why our slogan is Good Times Rolling is that, you know, people will go out, ride for a couple of hours and then come back and have a few beers and catch up with mates and, um, you know, enjoy some good food. And then, you know, all of our races are in stunning destinations so people can explore them and, you know, have the afternoon to go out and check out what the region's about. Um, so it's not, yeah, not what's between the start and the finish line, but it's everything around that, that whole four-day experience that you get to enjoy. G'day, Brendan. We're here at the start of the second stage, mate. You're riding, what, the team's men's... Men's event. How'd yep. you go yesterday? You just asked me how I went. I'm more interested in how you went. What was your day like? Uh, we had a bit of an adventurous start to the race. After about a K, my uh, partner in the crime broke his handlebars, so we had a bit of a on on track repair shop going, and managed to get going, get to the finish, limp to the finish, but that's okay. In that first K, what on that first little rocky bit? The very first rock up yeah. you're going there. That's where he snapped it. Yeah. Or just snapped the bar straight off. So he snapped it right next to the handle where the handle was. So for about 12 centimetres shorter, I suppose. And then we just pushed it across sideways. Uh, took everything off the broken bit, put it on the other bit, and he went off wonky for the rest of the race. How long did you spend fixing that? Uh, it felt like forever, but it had a look on our Strava thing. It was about four and a half minutes. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So it wasn't too bad. So by the time we stopped and started, probably about lost five or six minutes. It wasn't, it wasn't the end of the world. And we got to the finish, which is the big thing. So what have you done overnight? Were you able to get new bars? Yeah, he went and bought a new pair of bars. He's got enduro bars on there, no XE bars, big wide ones, but that's all we could get, and uh, off we go today. And do you know about this event? Have you done it before? I haven't done it before. I have seen it before, but yeah, no, it's it's been fun so far, and hopefully keep going fun. What do you think about the teams racing? Something I'm first time doing it with, I'm in the mixed teams. What do you think about riding with a mate, trying to get through together? I think it's awesome because you uh, you have that camaraderie. You just you don't want to give up. That was I think if I was single and if I was in his shoes, I probably would have pulled out of the race. But because you're in a team situation, you just want to get to the end. Yeah. Awesome. And this is him here, is it? This is the man. <laughs> good suntan on you as well. I'm, I'm liking oh. it. How you do? Yeah, good. So we just heard about the mishap yesterday. You got oh. the bars fixed. Now you got these super wide bars. Mate, I am out cruising today. It's <laughs> bloody awesome. It's like far out, but yeah, just shit happens. <laughs> Exactly. But that's that's the thing, like with your teammate there, it makes it a little bit easier to handle, doesn't it? Oh yeah, like he like the good idea. I was I was actually happy to well try and be happy riding along just hanging on to the knob. But um <laughs> um but we, yeah, we just moved everything in and made life a little a little less difficult. What are you looking forward to about today and the rest of the event I guess? Surviving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you for a cold beer. Done there, look forward to it. Thank you, sir. All right, Ellen and Tim, I'm in your little house here. Now, you guys have decided to travel in the uh, the camper van. You're in the mixed teams event. You're the specialised factory team, aren't you? Something like that. <laughs> Tell us about your little uh, journey here in your little camper van. It's a good way to do it, isn't it? Well, we've just made you coffee. Um, we've got water. We've got everything. We've got, our, we've got the comfort. It's seven degrees and we're warm and toasty in our little home. It was a laughing point at the start, but actually you're winning now. You've got the beers cold, you've got the coffee going. You, like you said, you're nice and warm in here, aren't you? Yeah, it's perfect. Bed, doona, you know, what else could you want at the start line? Now, after yesterday, what's your plan of attack um, to hit the, the bunch race today, Ella? Yeah, I think we're just going to hold on as long as we can and maybe hope someone gets a mechanical. I think that's our best <laughs> shot at getting on the podium. <laughs> perfect. Well, what are you looking forward to, Tim? First time you're doing the mixed mixed event yeah it's been good just just got to hold Ella's wheel hold everyone just as Ella said say how see how long we can last awesome all right I'll speak to you guys later well stage two is done um now we're in Port Douglas I've dragged hog Holly down to the infamous Iron Bar because you may have heard me talk about that last week. That is a very, very famous bar in the Docker family. My old man owns the Iron Bar. He got inspiration from the Port Douglas Iron Bar and I've seen it first time. Holly, what do you think? 
I think it's pretty good. Your dad has good taste. <laughs> We're enjoying a cold beer. It was a tough day today, Holly. What do you think? Oh, I blew my doors off. <laughs> my steering wheel fell off. Everything came came loose. But why? Let's go back to the start. So it was a bunch start today. First bunch start for us. And we take off. But it's not just the mixed pairs. It's the, all the pairs. So the pros <laughs> yeah. are there. I'm talking about Trekkie. He was in there. You know, Taz Nankervis was there. All the good guys. Anyone listening to this who knows them, they know how fast they go. And we were in there too. And you took off with them. I lost you at the start. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bit of a slippery gypsy sometimes. I like to get away. <laughs> so I'm just trying to catch up to you. I thought I was supposed to be helping you out, but I was like, all right. So I just thought, all right, I'm going to get into the pushing stuff. We're on this, you know, big sort of um, fire road. I was like, great. I'll just get behind Holly, start pushing her. Got way ahead of myself, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> decided I didn't want to push anymore. <laughs> Sent Mitch straight into the bush. I... Got my bars caught on Holly's bars. Amateur pushing mistake. And next thing you know, when they flung loose, I just went hard left. Boom, into the forest. I was worried. I was watching. I thought you were going like 35, 40k an hour, ripping through this. I'm going on the fire road and you're literally going faster than me. (laughs) Riding the Bronco through the bush. I was like, oh my goodness. I couldn't see a death here. It's not good. (laughs) I had, you know, the the thought to yell out keep going I'll catch up but you were just too kind you waited for me I put my bottles back in and we're back at it weren't we oh yep yep probably to our detriment but we are back on it that's for sure I felt we had to make up for my mistake so we went after it we uh, chased back the leaders actually yeah I was actually pretty surprised when I saw him mm. but we were going pretty hard like I was I was in the red zone but when we got across that was um Em and Carl, they were across in the front and we got across them, we sat up. I thought, you know, it's looking good now. We're in the front, but we hit that final single trail. What happened? I don't know. A bit of unfitness got to me. A bit of a few extra kilos and yeah, I couldn't couldn't quite pedal pedal the old girl home. But yeah, we got there. We got there. The weird thing is I didn't notice that we were going any slower or anything. It still just felt fast. That's the weird thing I'm finding out with mountain biking is When you lose speed, you don't notice it so much on the trails. Like, sure, I saw them ride away a little bit, but I thought, oh, maybe that's just because of technical, you know, their technique. And then next thing you know, um, Peter and Jared, uh, who we passed earlier, they came back all of a sudden. I was like, oh, where'd they come from? And then they passed us, and then it was like, okay, right, I realise we got to get this in. I want to hold on to third here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, like, you lose a bit of the punch, like... And that's where you don't notice, like, you're not coming out of corners quickly. And you do lose, like, I lose a lot of my, probably, like, I struggle to hold on to it a bit through the corners. Just, I'm not concentrate, like, I can't focus as well. That's mm. where I kind of lose it the most. Once you're over the limit. Yeah. And mm. I, I was just not recovering at all, <laughs> which you would, would have seen. <laughs> Well, let's just run through anyone out there listening, and we've just been talking about it because we're just assuming everyone knows what it is. This is mixed pairs racing, and like we did discuss it the other day, but it's really down to, you know, I'm still understanding it. It's, it's a down to that, okay, sure, I'm allowed to sort of give you a little push when we're trying to hold speed or hold on to a group, but it's about using each other's strengths, isn't it? What have you okay. sort of noticed about riding? You used to ride with your brother. Yep. There was that sort of unspoken, I know with my brothers and sisters, that unspoken thing you know about each other. But you and I, meeting at the airport, didn't <laughs> yeah. really know each other. And then suddenly we're riding together and supposed <laughs> to just connect and like know about each other, how to push and how to push to the limits and whatever. What are you thinking so far? The biggest differences you've seen since riding with your brother, now you and I going together? Um, honestly, like I've been really impressed. I think you've read it really well. Like I felt um, you've helped me so much. I mean... I'm definitely not at my peak fitness and I think like can all things considered like just meeting each other you're so fresh to like mountain bike racing I think we've done well like Mm. I think like yeah I don't really yeah obviously like um people like Em and Kyle they know each other super well but I feel like you're helping me as much as I like yeah I don't think you could do a better job all right you've you've sort of you know Cream me up. What are, what are the bad stuff? Here we go. Hit me with it. Uh, no, there's actually, it actually makes me feel pretty good when I ride away from you on the descent. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm not bad. <laughs> no, it's, 
No, I think like um, honestly, like for me, like I prefer to be in the front on the single trail because I can't really see very good. So mm. I prefer to be have open trail, and I don't really know what's happening behind me. Like I don't know what you're up to, so I kind of leave that to you. <laughs> what's our plan then? We've got two stages left. We've slipped back to third position. We're not that far behind. You know, what do you think? We've got not a lot of single trail left. I don't think, do we? No, not a lot of single trail, which I think will suit us pretty well. I think we'll be able to rip in on the road. Mm. Um, I blew my doors off today, but I reckon I can put them back on for tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah, watch you out. <laughs> All right, great. Well, let's let's chat tomorrow then. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, Vandy, where are we, mate? We're in Port Douglas. We're at Hemingway's Brewery. It's golden hour with his boats and beautiful people around, especially Trekkie just here, actually. Who are you, actually, if anyone out there listening? Who am I? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I was once good at mountain biking, and then I've just been uh, sort of slowly getting worse and worse at mountain biking over the years, and I've transitioned to a bit more of a media role, and uh, now I'm a media guy. But you're winning the men's single event. Yeah, no one's actually entered solo, though. Most people have friends, so, yeah, the pairs race is where all the prestige is and the mix with your where you're in, and... Uh, yeah, we're just out here riding solo and uh, against pretty much myself. But this is the key, isn't it, to these events, the vibe. You know, like, can you imagine us doing, a, you know, some kind of road race somewhere up here and all of us catching up for a quiet beer after the race? No, I've done some road racing over the years and I've never had a, just a casual beer with my competitors. It's usually in a huge hotel lobby and everyone's sitting in their own team groups and no one wants to talk to each other and everyone's sort of like flexing on each other. Like, but <laughs> No, it's more fun here. It's way more fun. Uh, mountain biking is the future as I'm glad that you finally figured out, Mitch. We've drawn you back from the dark side of the road to the light of the mountain bike. Let's talk to the pairs, but I'm talking to the men's pairs now. I'm talking Trekkie. Trekkie's been on the pod before, and you're running with John Odoms, mate. What's happening out there? The testosterone sort of battle. How's it going out there, boys? Yeah, it's good. I mean, we love these races, and yeah, we've had some, some really good success over the years, but this one we were on, we're actually on the back foot a bit with a puncher on the first day, so... I mean, we're we're trying, but we're just having fun. Like you know, it's 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 one thing to compete at these events, but you know, there's so much more you can actually enjoy. You know, riding with with a friend and like coming out to to the bar like we are now and just having a beer and um yeah, hanging out with people like yourself and um yeah, there's just there's so much more to it other than the the competition at the front. But um yeah, I mean, of course, we love that too, and and, and it's good to be competitive. So um yeah, we're trying each day. Well, I was saying before that I've been giving Holly a little push, and Trekkie said that actually happens in the men's as well. John, you've been pushing Trekkie up all the hills, have you, buddy? Oh, I don't think that's, uh, that's fair to say. I think I got a couple of pushes today. I wasn't feeling too good, but we got through, so that's okay. How does it go with the men? Like, is it, you know, because, like, what I'm working out with Holly and I is it's like it's not about the physical stuff. It's also about the psychological stuff, like giving the right encouragement at the right time because the... the the, the wrong come on can come across like, oh, come on, you know, you're not even trying. It's got to be, you know, actually meaningful. Do you guys talk to each other out there? Yeah, we do, but not not much. I mean, I think we know where we're at, like, for sure, like... John's shaking his head. <laughs> it's the unspoken communication that's real important. But there is so much to it. Like, you, you need to know when you want one, one to lead and one to, to follow kind of thing. And I think, like, other teams, maybe there's one dominant strong person who just always rides at the front and looks back but for us you know we're always swapping you know depending on we're going up or down or like a flat section or whatever so I think there's a lot to it and it's it adds so much more to racing for us I think like yeah it's it's cool to race as an individual and um, have your own success but I think yeah if you're if you're sharing with someone else and you, you, you're using that strategy as an advantage it's like it, it's a whole nother element and I think um, yeah the pairs racing really ha has its place. It does, I reckon. Do you guys do any training out um, together to work that out? No, not really. I mean, we I very rarely get get to have a ride together when I go down to Canberra and uh, do a lap or do a bunchy with the boys. But, yeah, I mean, because we've done a few few races together uh, before, it does make it a little bit easier for us, I think, having that experience. You're more skillful on the downhill. Tricky's got the legs on the uphill. Is that how it sort of works? Do you show him the ropes on the downhill? Like, mate, 
jump on the wheel, I've got the line. Yeah, I think it definitely helps to have to be able to read the trail real quickly. Um, having a bit of downhill and enduro experience really helps you read the trail if you haven't seen it before. Um, so I think that, that that does help us. I mean, obviously, if the first person is on the the front person is on the limit on the descent, you can really stitch up the person following along. So I've got to finish. Uh, got to first first to finish to finish first. So it's pretty important to keep it upright. You're hearing that. Does it actually work like that? Does it, is it easier following his line or you prefer to be in front on your own? No, for sure. Um, we always swap going into a, like a fast or a hard descent. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm able to follow pretty much, you know, most people. But um, if I'm in the front, I think we're a bit slower. So, yeah, if, I, if I'm, you know, making the, making the calls and the lines and the, and the speed, then it's, it's probably losing time. So, um, yeah, over the years, we definitely like developed that technique of John going to the front um, like even today we like I kind of got away on the first climb and then our kind of I guess plan ish was John would ride across them to stand, which kinda of happened but it just wasn't it wasn't long enough. So um, that sort of stuff happens and like John's got John's quicker than um, than everyone on the descents mostly. Um, so you can kind of play those games but um, yeah, like I say, it's just so many more elements when you're racing with two people. Do you have that theory that I have with Holly is like when I see her go over a jump I'm like, Well, if she can do it, oh, I can do it. Yeah, 100%. Like, if, if John hits it and we, I know we've got the right speed, like, we've got enough speed to, to, to make it. So, and just lines into corners and stuff, like, um, yeah, I find it really helpful. And, I, and I, I'd like to say I'm pretty good at following someone and, and judging the speed. So, what about mixed pairs? Have you guys done mixed pairs ever? No, I haven't done it before. Are you missing out? That's where it's at. Yeah, oh, well, that's another thing. Like, I reckon it, that's a really competitive category at these events. And, um, like, you're finding, I'm sure. Um, and it's it's always like good for us to keep an eye on like what's you know it's exciting to hear who's who's leading the mix and, and what's happened out on the track because like like you say you come down today for like pushing Holly and stuff there's just so much drama and I think um yeah it's just more exciting racing. Awesome. Well, let's get another beer. Hey Naji, we're uh, at the third stage. What part of the race are you doing? Are you doing pairs? You're doing individual? What's your? You're in the Australian Defence Force, I see. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I'm just re- representing the cycling club for defence. So yeah, just uh, going solo. How are you finding? It? Have you done an event like this before? Uh, I've done the Triple R in 2018, but apart from that, it's this is my first four day. So. And how are you finding it? I'm enjoying it so far. What any any mishaps? You know, what's your tactic when you go out there? You're hitting it, going full gas. You're just sort of riding your way into it. What's your sort of motto when you start this? I just play it as it comes, really. Um, Beautiful. When what what are you thinking today? You know, you got tired legs. You, you do you know this route? Do you know the course today? Uh, no, I don't know the course, but just looking at the terrain, it's it's reasonably flat except for a few hilly sections. So um, yeah, if I get out the front of my wave, sort of things, so I'm a pretty strong sort of. Uh, along the flat then I should be in a good position I think. It's good isn't it like you and I just park next to each other and, you know have a quick chat before the start and, you know may have never even met before but that's what I like about it. someone was helping me out before with a tool it's it's good camaraderie isn't it? Yeah it's 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 good and you know it's, as you said like even yesterday I was just talking to um, uh, a few random um, well a few other people um, and yeah even there's this one woman like during the race we were pretty much neck and neck the entire time so we were egging each other on and yeah, it's good. Awesome. Well, good luck today, mate. Yeah, cheers. You too. We've had dinner. We've done the stage, stage three. We're on our way back to the hotel, walking back. Let's just get some idea about what happened today. Today was the longest stage and arguably the, I think, the toughest stage for us. What do you think? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that one. What was going on over there? I think it was a bunch start. I like that. It was about, I don't know, 30 riders in the bunch. I felt at home because it was like the, felt like the peloton. I could move through the bunch and that sort of thing. Did you like the bunch start or would you prefer it once we got onto the first single trail? Um, to be completely honest with you, I didn't prefer either. I disliked both. Um, the bunch was a little bit scary. I think everyone riding around you was very calm and relaxed, but it was getting a little bit hectic where I was. 
And I think maybe that was me, but <laughs> yeah, it was a bit challenging. I think I was a bit more on the rivet than you, though. Well, maybe that's just because I, I preferred being on the roads. Once we got going, I think it was great because once we broke free from the rest, you know, some people went in front of us, some people went behind us. It was quite a nice day for us to sort of work together, wasn't it? Like, you know, the last two days we've been chasing other groups or, you know, doing the time trial, but today we had no one in front of us, no one behind us. We got a chance to sort of really work out the system. And, well, we haven't necessarily nailed it, but... I think I think it was okay. I think today was good. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, I think today we got in our, like, a rhythm. Yeah, it was smooth. Um, yeah, I enjoyed today. I think we could, like, I was hurting quite a bit. So it helped having you, like, being able to help me more, like, without people kind of, like, disrupting the speed. We could get, like, a, a good flow on. And, yeah, it worked. <laughs> what about, like, I think today was nice because there wasn't a whole lot of pushing today. It was more like... You were in the slipstream and then, you know, you were riding most of the climbs on your own. I liked today more than the other days because I didn't feel like I was having to, well, not having to. Sometimes I just push you without even knowing what to do. But actually what I've realized is sometimes you guys don't, the, the women, they don't want to be pushed. Is, do you? Oh, look, you don't want to be pushed. But when it's like the difference between a position, then yeah, like push <laughs> like um but no it is nice to like kind of do it on your own like it does feel a little bit better um but like honestly even when we're getting pushes like it hurts <laughs> anyway like you're already at like a red zone so it's like yeah but it is nice like finishing a stage with less pushing and being like yeah I actually pedaled my bike a little bit today <laughs> don't be so modest actually you were pedaling your bike a lot today I think we did really well we're sitting in third got one stage to go what's our idea about tomorrow um, I think tomorrow is like a hard stage to make up any time because there's not like no climbing. It's more of a fire trail descent and then a beach finish. Um, so I think it's like be safe, um, get to the finish, collect third. <laughs> I've just run to Chris and Michelle. Now, we got up early this morning and we shuttled up to the last stage. Tell me what was involved with the shuttle this morning. Uh, mate, it was actually pretty well organised. Uh, book it ahead, rock up. Uh, your bike got thrown into a very big truck and got covered in what looks like a very warm doona. There's actually a few people getting around wrapped in them because it's pretty cold here this morning. And yeah, and then we all bundled into a bus and it was an extremely quiet ride. I think everyone's pretty wrecked after four days of riding. So, um, yeah, there was a little bit of chat there, but uh, everyone was pretty quiet, I think. Probably a few sore legs today. Michelle, tell me about your team name because that's the how I spotted you two. I walked along and I was just like, hang on a sec, is that a picture of a... <laughs> yeah, it's a picture of a um, ball sack. So, <laughs> um, it's my brother, Chris, and so we're a, um, a sibling duo and our surname's Ball. So, we thought that, why not? Let's just uh, take it to the extreme, call ourselves Balls Deep and um, cover ourselves in hairy nut sacks. So, you'll see in my brother's jersey here, we've got a uh, ball sack on the sleeve, we've got a ball sack on the, on the hip and um, I'm sporting a ball sack on the front today and my brother has got his on the rear. <laughs> so you're in the mixed pairs with me actually. Yeah. I haven't noticed you the last couple of days, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. hanging at the back. <laughs> <laughs> How have you found it? Because I'm, as you guys just said, it's the first one you've done, first time one I've done with Holly. How are you finding it? Oh yeah, it's really great. I've ridden a lot of the area around here, so um, yeah, I have a great time. I'm all about the chin wag, which um, I'm not really getting a lot back from people on the hills. Everyone's just trying to give it all, and I'm out for the social side. Chris has been a bit of a mute uh, on the journey. His legs are suffering, um, but I uh, was lucky enough to have a couple of weeks in Canada before this and got plenty of riding oh. then. So uh, yeah, so feeling pretty good, but out there just having a good old social time more than anything. Well, maybe that's why he's been mute. Maybe you've been putting him on, the, you know, putting him to the sword out there. You been doing any pushing, or what's the what's the situation in your role? Oh man, just I just sit on the back, and then at the end, just like slip in in that last little bit, you know, just like draft it in and then peel away. Um, but no, it's been good. It's been a good mix of terrain. Like good day with some like nice uh, techie single track on that first day, and then it's definitely varied through, which has been really good. Uh, yesterday was pretty fun. Uh, it'd be nice uh, to have the gravel bike, I think, on that last section of yesterday just to be able to pin it a little bit more. Um, but no, it's been really good. Uh, the, the, the terrain and whatnot's been awesome. Um, and the weather's been great. Do you think you'll do something like this again, either of you? 
Yeah, I think definitely. I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, there's so many mates involved in the event that it's, yeah, it's been a really great time and it's been so well organised that, yeah, it's been smooth and easy and really looking forward to, um, yeah, sending it down the bump track to finish. Well, Tony, we're sending the coffee line, long line here on the last morning. What event are you in here at uh, Reef to Reef? I'm just observing today, Mitch. Oh, you are? You're yeah. not racing? Not today, no, no. What's your role here? They, I'm a medic working. Hopefully no one gets injured today. We had a busy day yesterday. Hopefully ha- it's a bit quieter today. It was a busy day yesterday, was it? Mm. A few people went down. Yeah. What are, the, what are the states of the injuries in these kinds of events? It can be ranging from everything, can it? Typically uh, shoulders, wrists and lots of abrasions, but yeah, shoulders. Do you like getting out on the bike yourself? Absolutely. Road cyclist, yeah. Ah, yeah. right. And uh, how come you got involved in this event? Well, I've not long moved up from down at Noosa, um, and I used to do a bit of work with the assist medics people down on the Sunshine Coast, and uh, they knew I was up here, so they, I got a tap on the shoulder to come along. So. Well, I hope today, the bump track, I've heard a lot about it, I hope there's no falls or any uh, offs today, and make your job a lot easier. Terrific, Mitch. All the best, mate. Thanks. Good to see you up here. You too. Yeah. Mike and Imogen, we're in the last day, the teams, the mixed pairs, the heated race... You were with us yesterday, hoping to leapfrog us, but unfortunately, Imogen, she had a bit of a rear wheel explosion. Tell me first of all about that, but secondly about what do you think about the, the mixed pairs and how it's been racing this week? Yeah, okay, so the rear wheel explosion was a bit of a surprise. I don't remember hitting anything. Um, I'm a pretty uh, small rider, so it's not like I was being rough or anything like that, but we think maybe there was a, a crack in the rim and it was just a bit of a expensive carbon fibre time bomb, really, that went off at a bad, bad moment. Well, how did you get out of that? Because I, obviously then, what do you do? Yeah, it was bad. So the rim was completely broken, the spoke was pulled through, there was carbon shards everywhere. But we stuffed it full of gel wrappers and just some plastic that we had. And uh, we put a tube in and then put the tyre back on, we wrapped it up with uh, duct tape and then someone gave us some zip ties and we zip tied the duct tape on. But the problem was that the wheel was so crooked that it was rubbing the frame and it was rubbing holes in, it was rubbing through the carbon of my frame on the stays. So we had to keep stopping and asking people for tape and someone gave us a tube and we wrapped a tube around my frame and we stopped a lot of times. We got a lot of help too. But you got to the end. I love that determination. What was it like out there, Mike? Was it stressful or were you just like, cool, you know what, we'll just get out of this however, however way we have to? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the stressful part was the start before any of this happened, like just with the more people in in the start group. But I think once we were kind of in the race with you guys, it was, um, you know, just situation normal. Just uh, look after your queen and keep moving. Um, but yeah, it did kind of have to, have to look at um, what we had on hand to kind of get the wheel moving and once I saw it wasn't just cracked to the spoke hole but had gone right across the rim and knew there's no integrity to it so I think Imogen was pretty much riding a noodle on noodle the whole the whole time um, but yeah I think what was really impressive was how friendly people were out there they were like hey Mike what do you need and you know, we had people giving us stuff giving us Leatherman to cut things up with it was really good and you know I, I spent a lot of time at the feed zone uh, lubing chains filling bottles popping popping uh, code and nutrition tabs in people's bottles for them. No one offered to take one neat, but, uh, you know, <laughs> couldn't jam up for it. What about this vibe of the mixed pairs? You know, something I'm just discovering. It's a cool vibe, isn't it? It's a close race, but it's a friendly race, isn't it? It's awesome. I love racing mixed. Mike and I have always raced mixed. We raced mixed before we were a couple, and then we got married, and we still race mixed. Um, and, yeah, I just love it. I love the... the the way you have to work together because often the abilities are there's a little bit of a gap between them and you have to communicate a lot there's a lot of strategy um all the mixed teams have slightly different abilities and ways of working together so it's always interesting racing but yeah above all the vibe is awesome it's competitive but super friendly so it's good it's all right let's get ready G'day Jason, now we're talking, you've got a bag of hot chips with the top ripped open, 
old school style. It just <laughs> it just shows exactly where we're at. We're at the end of stage four. Now you've just done four stages solo. Have you done uh, reef to reef before? And what have you thought of this year? Uh, no, first time doing reef to reef. I have done stage races in the past. I used to do wild side down in Tassie a few times. So it's a similar kind of scenario. Um, obviously, just a lot warmer. <laughs> Yeah. It was good, good event. What, what attracts you to these events? You know, people listening out there go, why would you go and do a four-day mountain bike event? Holiday, primarily. <laughs> yeah, just get away from Melbourne, get away from the cold, and then just enjoy the warmth and you know, get out of get out of town, pretty much. It's pretty fun though, isn't it? Like you get out there, sure, it gets hard sometimes, but most of the time it's pretty relaxed. The trails are pretty, you know, they're not too crazy, and you get back, you have a chat, you have a chin wag, you meet people. Maybe cheeky cold beer. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the key, key to it. It's basically having some fun. If you want to push hard, you push hard. If not, then you just cruise around and enjoy the scenery. So, yeah. Well, I'll see you up at the presentation. Yes, you will. All right, here we are. It's all over now, Brian. We're here. We're about to head home, mate. What event did you do? You got through the four days, didn't you? Yeah, I did in the uh, four-day masters category. Where'd you finish? Sixteenth. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. No, sorry. GC uh, forty-three and sixteenth in my category. Top twenty. You're not going to be disappointed with that, are you? No, I'm not. He did better than me, but he's killing me. <laughs> That's your mate you're pointing to over there. So tell me about it. Why Why did you come and decide to do something like this? Have you, do you do these all the time? No, I've done them one day. I've never done a, a stage race before, and I thought it'd be good and opportunity. I've got some mates here that wanted to do it, and other mates coming, so I thought I'd throw it up and go and do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, after doing it, was it exactly what you thought? What was the atmosphere like? What were the trails like? How did you back up? It's harder than what you think. Yeah, because as a roadie, you look at the Ks, yeah. everyone goes, well, that's nothing at home. But you go out there and do it and go, I'm in a body bag. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it was hard. Yeah. Great. You reckon you'll come back and do something like this again? Yeah, I'd like to, and I'm getting sprayed. <laughs> if you get the hall pass from the missus, that is. Yeah, the cash book. Yeah, yeah. got to get out. That's right, the bank account. That's right. Well, I'll let you go. Thanks for talking. Right, thank you, and thank for the organisers for the event. It's been awesome. Oh, here they are. i got the winners here. Em and Carl, you know, you gave us some support out there, but at the end of the day, you were just too good for Holly and I. How does it feel to be crowned the last time you'll ever be pairs winners? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. You guys just improved so dramatically over the last four days. I'm terrified for Cape to Cape. Uh, but no, it feels good. It feels good to win. And em, what did you think today? What do you think of, you've been to Reef 3 for four. What do you think of this year's edition? Yeah, I think it was great. I think the mixed pairs category was good fun. There's a cool, a cool crew. Um, so I hope you're doing it again at Cape to Cape with Holly. Well, we are. I think I think what the thing I loved the most about this was, look, we are racing each other. But every time you came past, not every time, but in the, in the right moment, you were able to give that support, that encouragement to Holly. And I, I felt that back and forth between the girls. And the guys were able to give, well, you were able to give me some advice too. So it's, it is competition, but it's also healthy competition. You know, we all just want to have a good race. A good race, and I think there's just a, we've got respect for each other, and we're all here and we all love to suffer, but we're, you know, you've got to encourage each other as well. Great. Well, let's get over to this presentation so you guys can get the, the big gold medal. Oh, I can't wait, mate. John, Trekkie, it's all over. We're sitting here enjoying a cold beer. This is what it's all about, isn't it? How good is Reef to Reef? This is what it's all about. Don't worry about racing. You just enjoy it. This is what mountain biking is, isn't it? Yeah, it is in a way. Um, especially the, the multi-day events. You get, a, you get to sort of know the people you're hanging out with each day. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of rapport builds up by the end of the week. And, um, yeah, it's just you've shared something together, I think. Like, a, you know. Why doesn't, why doesn't this happen on the road? What's, what's the missing link here? I, I think that the riding is just so fun that I mean yeah you can just you could just be a pure racer but you would miss I'd say like most of the point of the event and that's just to have a good time and enjoy the trails enjoy enjoy like I don't know just hanging out at the start and finish and just talking shit with people it's great did you guys have a fight out there I know because you guys are pairs I'm experiencing mixed pairs I saw a few tiffs out there what about you two do you guys ever get up each other no I would say we've never had any any kind of issue actually to be honest um, I think that's why we've been a good pair over the years like we just kind of have our strengths and weaknesses and we just stick to that and just get it done like today was really a good stage for us actually we had a ball and and, and to come in um, on this stage like on the beach and finish in, finish in front was pretty cool so um, yeah I think we've just got a good team and yeah no, no arguments John you agree with that I can see some shaking and 
<laughs> no, I mean, it, but, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's we have a lot of fun out there. We don't have any blow-ups or anything like that. I mean, I haven't felt that great in the last couple of days, but it was good to actually feel feel pretty good today and just smack along the beach at 350 watts. It's a nice way to finish it. Beautiful, boys. Disclaimer out. If I do not pronounce your name right, I am so sorry. The winner of the All right, Leon, we're just talking quietly here because the presentation's on. You've just finished four days and didn't end so well, did it? You got onto the beach. What I said was quite a majestical finish. What happened for you? Well, it was about a kilometre to go. There was a small group, about four or five guys, and uh, everyone was trying to catch everyone's wheel, and unfortunately the guy in front of me decided to change line. And... Uh, took my front wheel out I know my front wheel is my responsibility you know but it's just unfortunate and yeah hit the dirt pretty hard and uh, at 40 k's an hour the sand hurts I didn't recognize you when we first started talking but I just realized that you have been riding around the, the mixed pairs um, sort of all week you've seen how it's all been working what have you thought about that event yeah no nah, look um, yeah re it's really interesting to watch you guys race you know as mixed pairs and uh, uh, you know, I don't have a, a, a mixed Just pair sort of person I can race with, but yeah, and I think it's it's really fun, and the pairs concept is really really good. Um, it certainly changes the way you race and how you think about what you do and strengths and weaknesses. So, uh, and you guys did really well. It's it great to be out to be out there, sort of, you know, in front and behind you guys a couple of times and see how you were sort of helping each other and supporting each other. It was great. Is it annoying though if you get caught behind us and all of a sudden we're you know backing you out and then we're riding back past, you know, being pushing? Nah, not at all, mate. That's mountain biking. You know, everyone got their strengths and weaknesses and people with road backgrounds will generally be a bit stronger on, on fire roads and climbs and you get in the techie stuff and, and the downs and I, I tend to catch up and yesterday I think um, you guys were out climbing me and then I was catching you on the downs and it wasn't until it was a bit bigger climb that you just got away from me and I didn't see you again but yeah no it's just uh, yeah it's good fun awesome thanks mate podium Ladies and gentlemen, your stage winners for the mix. Let's do it again. Peter Malan, Maroney and Jared, please welcome us to the stage as the stage winners. All right, Peter, we're here at the presentation. The race is done, the mix pairs. I know you're a big fan. What do you think of the last day today? Yeah, I loved it. It was still more climbing than I would have liked. But we finished down a really cool descent onto the beach. And yeah, uh, Jared and I actually finished romantically uh, riding along the beach with Paul Vanderpoe, just as I'd imagined, reef to reef from the start. And we're just waiting at presentations. But um, Jared and I have been deleted from the mixed pairs results. I think they thought we were a men's team. What is, it, what is it about the mix, though? Because, like, I'm just discovering it. I'm like, this is actually a really cool event because it's it's really, you've really got to work together more than ever as a team. Mm. You know, it's really, you've got to understand the limits of each other and work through it. You and Jared, have written, your husband, have written... Oh, well done, boyfriend. Ladies, boyfriend, sorry. I'll let it slide. It's been 13 years. It is time. Come on, okay, let's get together. boyfriend, have been writing this for a long time. You've worked it out. What is it about the mixed pairs that you love? I think he just likes going easier than what he would have to in the uh, the men's. But I don't know. It's, I think everybody finishes a mountain bike race and shares war stories. And it's really special for us to be able to share those war stories together. And it's a really competitive category. It's really good camaraderie in the category. And it's exciting. Someone might have a stronger female. Someone might have a stronger male. Um, yeah, the dynamic of it. I think is much more interesting than, than any other category. Nothing says teamwork like a mixed pair. I agree. 100% agree. Well, we'll see you at Cape to Cape, I guess. Game on. <laughs> well, the Cape to Cape is done. We've done the presentation. We've done dinner. Everything is sort of calmed down. Holly, the race is done. We've had four days together. Now, what do you think? We've finished third. Are you happy? Are you not happy? You've won this. So what is your opinion? Um, Reef to Reef, by the way. Sorry, Just Reef to Reef. Up. Thank you, Reef to Reef. Sorry, <laughs> Cape to Cape is coming. Everyone, hang on to your horses. <laughs> um, what was the question again? Now I've been distracted. So, by what's your opinion? Like, we've, we've done it. You've ridden with someone else before. You've ridden with your brother. You've done the mixed pairs. Now we've finished third. Are you happy? Are you not happy? What's your expectations? Was it tough this year? 
it was the probably for me this was probably one of the toughest ones I've done I think like my legs my form wasn't a hundred percent so I did a lot of suffering this week um a lot of suffering which you obviously saw but it was enjoyable suffering like it was yeah maybe not in the moment when I was like I think I'm gonna spew right now and I almost did spew a few times but really I swallowed it so it's okay right (laughs) no but um it was hard but I enjoyed it like you cross a line and it's just like I could not have given any more and I felt like you were given absolutely everything i mean half the time i had no idea where you were (laughs) or what you were doing so i assume that you were dealing with your own shit but (laughs) yeah it was like i feel like we gave it everything the atmosphere was awesome i mean like the pairs we rode with they're like pretty crazy like good people and it was just like awesome atmosphere couldn't yeah i think it was yeah pretty solid weekend what about the psychological encouragement because i wasn't sure where that was going and it all came from the heart at the moment i felt it and i was like cool this is what i want to say so i said it (laughs) was it right was it wrong it was fine it was good actually there was like yeah a few of them were like quite like get to the top of the hill i was like i like simple instructions get to the top of the hill i was like Okay, I can do that. <laughs> I can't promise you about the next hill <laughs> where I'm blown well, up. Well, I was never <laughs> addressing the next hill purely because I didn't know the parkour, but yes. <laughs> Should have had the mocker on the bars, but <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> Does that help? Does the psychological stuff help as much as the physical? Um, Yeah, I guess like not as much as being pushed up the hill. Like you're never going to encourage me <laughs> up the hill. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it does help. Like it is like... It kind of like makes that moment a little bit easier. Like if you just like follow that wheel, get to the top of the hill. And it is so much easier. Like if you're a cyclist, you, you know, like once you go over the top, it's so much easier. Like you just have to fight hard for that like slight moment and it's easy. Mm. Like, yeah, but it is in that moment, it feels like you can't do it, but you can. So on the reverse side, okay, we talked about the physical stuff, the mountain biking stuff. Hit me with it and don't be too nice. And I know you're going to be nice because you're a nice person. The mountain, the downhill stuff. How was I? How was the, the single track? Because I let you just go. And I know my opinion and I was hanging on. Were you surprised or were you happy with our combination? Can we see a future together? <laughs> oh, this is a lot. Yeah, it is a big, big question. And you're on the mic, so I know you're probably going to say the right thing, but hit me with it. I was surprised after you talked yourself down quite a bit. I was like, "What have I got? Who have I got here? Do we need training wheels?" Like, (laughs) and after the the like the second stage, the not the time trial stage. I mean, when you nearly crashed, I was like, "Oh no, where this is gonna get like no groomed mountain bike trails anymore? Like, this is gonna get hairy." Like, and when I was literally going down a fire road and you're in the bush next me on the same speed, and I'm not sure that you had your hand on your handlebars. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be a very long four days, especially when you've got a broken arm and a neck. But <laughs> and then, but after that, I was actually very surprised. Like, you actually handled the bike pretty well. And now I'm even more surprised because you told me I was going too slow down the bump track. You but were going slow down there. I was cramping and I was worried for you. I didn't want you to be like, I have to keep up with Holly and then crash. And then I'll be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want toxic masculinity all over this. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll go slow, make you feel good about yourself. But <laughs> Oh, God, here we go. All right, well, so we're done. Reef to Reef is done. We finished third. I thought it was a really good first race. I loved racing with you. It was a lot of fun. It was not only the personal relationship, understanding who you were, you know, psychologically, but also off the bike, in outside of the race, in the race. The physical side, seeing you push yourself to the absolute limit, but the question is, where do we go from here? Are we good enough for Cape to Cape, the next one on the horizon? Oh, that's a big question. I feel like we have it in us. I think we have potential to improve. Yeah, and I feel like it almost period not to. <laughs> mm, I think the mixed pairs listening out there, because I know they will. We've got Peter and Jared. We've got Carl and Emma. Or Em, sorry. They're listening, and I know they are. <laughs> they won. Peter and Joe were second, and there it was a heated competition. So we're coming for you guys, aren't we? Oh, I, yeah, they're definitely going to have to watch their back. <laughs> and anyone listening out there who hasn't done this or who would want to think about doing this with their wife or someone they know who is, you know is a a male or a female who they think you know I could actually get together with them and do an event like this, go and do it. It's awesome. 
I really love doing this. It's something. It's a completely new world for me. Um, it's quite enjoyable. And Holly, without doing it with your brother, what's it been like? Different. I don't know. Like it. It is like I guess like doing it with your brother. He knows me so well. And like, so I was a little bit worried that you'd be like, I'll, it would be weird because you can't, like, you have to be nice or whatever. But I didn't feel that. I just didn't talk to you because I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think like, um, I don't know. It is a little bit different, but I think it was like, I think we had a good dynamic. Like we worked well. I think we didn't get mad at each other. Like we were just both like pretty chill and just like enjoyed it for what it was. And I think that makes you ride faster, just like enjoying the process rather than focusing on like winning or having a result. Great. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed our little adventure here at Reef to Reef and um, hang in for Talking Lost. Well, there we have it. A week up in Cairns. Well, four days up in Cairns. Coming on the road with Holly and I, plus meeting all those characters around the race as well. As you can tell, it was a lot of fun. That was just a few days ago for me. I'm back in the cold Melbourne now, recovering from that event and probably recovering from a few too many beers as well. It was a lot of fun and I'm really, really looking forward to Cape to Cape in a couple of months' time. I hope you guys enjoyed the story and a little bit of an insight into a different peloton again. This episode is being brought to you by Rafa and then like I said to you, they kitted us up for Reef to Reef. We looked fantastic. I had a great time up there with Holly in that Rafa stuff too. But of course, they're the driving force behind the podcast this year. So a massive thanks goes out to them. Of course, Lara behind the scenes who's helping me put these episodes together and all the other little bits and pieces around the edges and Will Jones who no doubt had a lot of time and a lot of fun piecing this episode together. So guys, thanks a lot for listening and next week we've got a Talking Loft with Holly Harris. So until then, cheers. The music in this episode was composed by Pete Shelley. Cheers, mate.